Hey folks, uh, I am Ajaswi and I'm the program manager for bots and teams and I'm joined by Tatiana who is the senior software engineering manager for bots and teams. And today, you know, we're excited to uh, talk about single sign on for bots, which is generally available now. So let me start by just giving uh, uh, an overview of like the OAuth story for bots today prior to uh, prior to single sign on, obviously. So wh why exactly would you require authentication inside a bot? Well, typically it would be that, you know, to a user might send you a request or you understand that in order to complete certain workflows, you need access to certain privileged information uh, of, uh, from a particular user. It could be uh, their email address, it could be uh, some other protected part of their Microsoft Graph token. You want to access a particular file, a calendar event, or a meeting on their behalf. So in order to enable all of these, like these more complex and advanced scenarios, you need to authenticate the user and then be authorized to access uh, the user's token and credentials on their behalf. So in order to do that, you need some sort of authentication. So typically what that involves in Teams is, uh, if you've done this before, there are some things called sign-in cards. So the way this flow will typically work is a user will, will send a message to your bot. At that point, your bot determines, okay, to complete this particular workflow, I actually do need the user to sign in. Maybe it's asking for some level of privileged information or org charts or something like that. And then you send a sign-in card back. Then uh, the user sees the sign-in card. It's you know the message is tantamount to something like, "Hey, in order to proceed further, please sign in." The user goes ahead, clicks the sign-in button. You know, uh, you, we just saw Karthik's example. There's a little SSO pop-up, and then that takes us to the Azure A AD uh, sign-in. So it's very similar from their point, from this point on to for bots as well, whether it's bots or tabs. And uh, we take uh, we take the user through the auth provider. They do the necessary checks, then they approve, they verify the authentic, uh, identity of the user and they return a token back to us. And uh, the bot can then take this token, grab the necessary information, such as their email address or like some other information like org chart in our previous example, and render whatever is necessary to take that information and like complete the workflow and render the necessary information back to the user. Now, all this is well like, one, for example, it works, right? And there are two key pieces over here, the sign-in card, and then you having registered your application with uh, Azure Active Directory, the sign-in card being a means to uh, authenticate the user and you having registered your uh, application with Azure Active Directory means being roughly a, a means of authorizing your application to talk with uh, Azure Active Directory. Now, okay, so this works all well and good. Everything just, seems fine, right? But there are a few limitations with this approach. The first implementation is that, you know, there are a certain class of applications, for example, the who word within Teams. Uh, this approach even requires like our first party applications uh, or certain IT admin or tenant approved applications. Even these applications that we think like operate with a higher degree of trust, especially the ones uh, authorized by the tenant admin, they also need a sign in. And secondly, uh, in certain cases, the bot uh, framework store will not refresh the tokens, which means that the user will have to keep on signing again and again and again till we exhaust them. And you know this can be bad for your app's retention. So in order to combat both of these core issues that we're seeing with authentication today, uh, we've introduced something called a uh, single sign-on for bots. So I'm going to play a video and uh, I'll just uh, walk us through what happens earlier and how the new SSO flow is going to look like. So here is the WhoBot and uh, what is demonstrated is basically if you are, let's assume that I signed in once and I'm asking about like, hey, who are these people that I work with? And effectively, if the tokens expire, then the bot is just going to be like, hey, I really need you to give me permissions before I can uh, perform searches on your behalf. I'm not going to be able to do this unless you sign me in and authenticate and we move forward. So that's effectively what is happening on this page is the tokens have expired. There's no way to refresh them uh, other than just going through the flow all out. Now, 
with single sign on for bots, this workflow is going to change slightly. And what's going to happen is this is a demo board over here, and then it's, all it does is just sends authentication tokens when you say, hey, so you know, a pretty savvy bot. But I go to the board, I'm like, like say, hey, and then you see this small little ephemeral message come over here that says that we need to ask additional permissions on your behalf. Like you would only have to do this once and then you continue with it. So the first thing you notice is that as opposed to the sign in cards that were taking like the majority of the space earlier, what we're doing right now is just a simple ephemeral message at the bottom. And uh, what, this is good from a UX perspective. One, because it doesn't leave the trace of the sign in on the bot chat. So it keeps the bot chat consistent and clear and only, you know, keeps things more clear and relevant to the actual information and the actual workflows that your bot wants to accomplish rather than some cards sitting there with sign in content. Two, since our tokens are refreshed, right, and you send us a request for sign in, since this message is ephemeral, under uh, the first thing that Teams is going to do is we're going to silently try and acquire the token and see if like the tokens are available uh, in the in the bot framework token store. If they are available, then we'll just pass the token back to you, so the user won't see a prompt. And if they aren't, then they will see the prompt. So this is one of the reasons why we had to make this ephemeral, and uh, what you see. Over and the reason why you see this over here. So then you go ahead and uh, the user completes the flow and that's it. They're signed in. Now, I'm uh, now we're just going to create an event and uh, yeah. So there we just created like some, you know, a calendar event for a particular meeting. And now with single sign on, you'll be able to see that the bot is just able to grab the event without without having to prompt the user through a sign in flow again. Right, so there we go. So this is an event. Right, so let's move on to scenario number two. Uh, now over here in this, this is, uh, I've got, a, so this is another user. This is a totally different user. It's a different tenant. And this user has a bunch of very important meetings over here, as you can see. And we want to visualize these meetings because you know presumably we can run some sort of analytics and try to understand like how busy work um, how busy the employees are and what's happening over there so in this case uh importantly i grabbed this bot from the tenant admin store right uh, my it admin has authorized this particular bot to be enabled for sso and he's opted in the entire tenant on their behalf because this is presumably like it's it's a trusted board. The admins uh, think it's valuable enough and so they've enabled uh, SSO for this one. Now what's going to happen is when you try to figure out like what the bot can do, it straight up is able to like access all of your meetings without the user having to sign in even once. How of which we think is a very powerful scenario because like for a certain subset of applications for a sub certain subset of bots which you've developed yourself or you'll, you've worked with their isvs to customize to your needs you've effectively reduced that first hurdle uh, for the user being productive and for them being able to access uh, the resources out of SSO. so that's it uh, so both of these features together will be part of sso for bots the first one being the ability to refresh tokens, which eliminates the needs for users having to sign in again and again. That's that's the first core scenario. The second core scenario being the IT admin approving a particular application and opting in on behalf of users inside that tenant. So let's quickly go through the flow for SSO at runtime, and uh, this is all documented on uh, on MSDN. And I've also linked the docs from uh, this page, and you know, um, we'll make sure that they're included as part of the blog post uh, that Dana sends out with uh, with all of these uh, uh, meetings. So, briefly, here's the flow. Here's the like six steps that happen. So, uh, the first thing that happens is that your bot data mines that for whatever reason uh, to complete a particular workflow, it needs to, to sign in the user, and it sends an auth card to Teams. 
Teams receives that message, and for the first time, for, for first time users, it's, uh, it creates an ephemeral message, much like you saw over here, and underneath over, and you're seeing underneath over here, and it prompts the user to sign in and makes a call to Azure Active Directory to grab the user's tokens and credentials. So once all the all of that is done, once all so so it signs. Uh, prompt sign in and then request the credentials from Azure Active Directory on behalf of the user. Then Azure AD says, OK, here are the credentials. Microsoft Teams uh, uh, take it and pass it on further. Then Microsoft Teams will take, grab those tokens and like pass it on to you, the board developer in your application. And then you know, you'll know you use the token, parse out the relevant information for this. In this particular case, the various meetings that were part of the user's calendar. And then, or, or for example, it could have been the email address or the org chart in the case of the who board, and use that to move on further and complete the work. And that's basically it. Uh, that's SSO for runtime. Runtime. The core feature being that point number two, which is the cause of major, major user friction, is going to be taken away because the user will only have to do this once, or you will have the IT admin approve the board and the user won't have to do this at all. And that's it. That's single sign on for bots at runtime. Awesome, thank you.